how about this? Let me choose sine, okay? And plus phi. Uh, or otherwise, if you wish, you can choose into the cosine, 10 t plus, let me call it uh, sine, okay? Whatever the format. So here, uh, that is the purpose of this one. So this basically, the remaining is you find the, the, the capital X and the phi. So to do this one, I simply, you simply just expand this one and compare the coefficient to coefficient of combustion. So for this one, you expand it is cosine, sine t is sine 10 t times cosine phi. <coughs> Let me get the cosine phi at the front, cosine phi sine 10 t. Plus sine phi cosine 10 t. Okay, so basically here you expand it, you can see, compare the coefficient of the sine. So therefore, 3 equal to capital X times cosine phi. And one more time here, I show you how to do the calculations um, the, to calculate the amplitude and the phase angle. And four coefficients, uh, sorry, I make a sorry here. This is the coefficient of the sine, and which is four. Okay, and that is equal to this one. So here should be four. And then the other one, the coefficient of the cosine equal to 3, which is equal to capital X multiplied with this one. Okay, so with the two things, the two equations, two and one, you should be able to solve for. So from here, the first one is this. You simply take a square term of the equal sign, so that is this 4 squared plus 3 squared equal to capital X squared sine squared plus cosine squared. So that is capital X squared. So therefore from here the capital X equal to 5. And then you <coughs> then also you divide the terms, you compare the terms divided to each other. For example here, 4 over 3 will be equal to cosine phi divided by sine phi. So that means the 3 over 4 equal to cosine phi sine phi, and that is tangent. So from here you can find the tangent equal to arctangent, the C, uh, the phi equal to arctangent of this one. Okay, so once you have this, the capital X equal to this one, and the phi equal to this one, and doing symbolic calculations, numbers is like this, symbolic calculation is like this, okay, and here I applied uh, a little bit another new formula here. So that is the arrangement of the textbook provided to us, and which means we have magnitude here, and we have phase angle here, and that is um, just like the formula in textbook. Okay. And again, this is not necessary. As long as you can get this step, that should be fine. And I like this one. I prefer this one than. I prefer this one over this one, okay? I prefer, well, I prefer this one. Uh, this one is, is okay, okay? So that is the whole what's going on in the formula, and I haven't provided this grading to TA yet, and but I will let him know, and so, yes? If you're gonna provide it to the TA, so... Um, yeah, I'll provide TA this thing. Well, the last step, so for your emoja, like at the very bottom of the next page, of the next page. Next page. <coughs> you evaluated it to be 1.133. Yes. And it's not that. It's 1.323. 1.323? 1 yeah. No. Well, okay. the calculate. No, no, no. Because that's omega. Yeah. Omega equal to this one. <coughs> yeah. Square root of this one, how much? Square root of 7 divided by 4 is 1.32287565. Oh. So, so it's 1.323. 1.323. Okay. Yeah. So I my, mean, okay, my yeah. mistake. Let me correct that one. Okay. 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 Sorry. Okay. Uh, 1.7. Okay. No one. And I will fix that one. Okay. Well, I'm just saying, but thank you for going through this. So, so this one is going to show you the, the what's going on here and basically, um, yeah. Okay. 
Um, any questions? Do you know what we are talking about? Okay. So now, if no questions, then we can go to the uh, models. So last week, we talked about this one, and basically the equation we show you is this one. We have the M, the mass is M. Y dot dot plus C, Y dot plus KY equal to, here we have the loading applied, the loading, uh, assuming we have additional loading applied to the mass, and last time I showed is F. And say, uh, if we are given the initial condition is, uh, this one equal to zero. So basically here we take the plot transform we can have is y of s and m s squared plus c s plus k and equal to s of s. And here the here we have taken is uh, y of t, the plus transform is defined as y of s. The plus transform of the uh, force function is equal to uh, f of s. Okay, we have utilized the two definitions. So we have this, and last Friday I also give you the certain numbers uh, for the examples. So here we can calculate y of t, and so therefore, say uh, you can calculate y over s will be equal to f of s and m squared. <coughs> so right now, assuming here I give you any function f of s, or you can calculate it, you should be able to find what is, uh, you take the inverse of y, then you can get is the uh, y of t. Okay. So suppose after homework one, you should be able to do it. <coughs> And here I want to introduce, with this one in mind, I want to introduce a function um, of term. So here for this system, uh, basically here this is the degree of freedom system, the degree of freedom of the system. <coughs> and here we have additional loading that is f of t external, we call the external excitation of t. And I couldn't say it, but suppose this one uh, with my symbol, this should be f of t. F of t can be any type of the external, uh, the external loading can be any type. That can be a constant, can be a linear acceleration, or can be sinusoidal function, or can be any kind of the uh, non periodic function, anything. And by including, by considering this external uh, excitations, the vibration system is called the force vibration system. Okay, that will be covered in your vibration uh, for MB four zero A. But here, the concept is this: we are given the excitations, and excitation is the external external uh, signal we are applying. And then we simply want to uh, see how the system responds. So the system response is. in terms of the degree of freedom. And here you can pick any kinds of the signal pertaining to the system to look at the response. But in general, for the vibration systems, we pick up is the data displacement as our uh, information for studying the system response. So usually here we have excitation, we look through the system response. For the excitation in terms of the controls of language, we call this we call the input. We see what kind of the input to excite the systems. Then we'll study here. We want to know what is the output of the system. Okay, so here this is the, uh, the, the language used in control, and those are the language used in vibrations, but they basically the same thing here. And so in particular, from here you can see this is the output, this is the input. 
this is the output, the plot transform of the output. This is the plot transform of the input. So in control, we have the particular term we call the transfer functions. Transfer function is defined by the output uh, over input. Okay. So that de definition is the output, uh, the ratio between the output and input. And for this example here, that basically is y of s divided by f of s. That is defined as the transfer function of this dynamic system. Once we plug in for this uh, particular one degree freedom uh, vibration system, this one basically equal to one m over s squared plus c s plus k. So this is a transfer function. For this example here, we have is this in representations of transfer function. <coughs> transfer functions can be represented by a block diagram. So this is the input. Input is uh, f of s, and this is output. And which, for for example, here that is y of s. And output equal to the gain of the system multiplied with input. So here is m s squared plus c s plus k. So you look at this one. Y equal to this multiplied with f. Y equal to this transfer functions multiplied with f of s. In terms of the algebraic kind of multiplication procedures, this plot diagram basically is to replicate this kind of sequence. Y equal to this multiplied with this. Okay? That is the reading, that is the learning, the language of doing this. <coughs> And sometimes people like to say this for the uh, the block diagram, and sometimes people call this for the gain, for the gain of the system, uh, or you simply name that as the the transfer functions. Okay, basically this is the transfer functions. The same thing. The basically the same. Thing. Those things in mind, because here uh, we have this one. I can be why we want to study the transfer function. The transfer <coughs> function basically tell us everything about the system's dynamics. Uh, you can see we have a system. The system take up whatever the input it will respond to that input through uh, the multiplication of the gain or through multiplication of the transfer function and will obtain the output. The output is determined by the, the multiplication of the input and the system. So that means you can see in particular, uh, the transfer function play a key, uh, key role in determine the overall output. So basically the output has been uh, from two resources. One is the determined by the input, the other one determined by the system itself. For controls, the first part is we want to categorize the system's response. We want to categorize the, how the system responds. So basically in the first portion, in the following, um, this chapter we're going to on the modeling, but the modeling will be quick, very quick. The follow-up is we will focus on the transfer function. The transfer function gives us is the system's behavior. Different system will have a different system behavior. For, for example, for this case, now we determined by M, C, and K. Different M, C, K values will give us the different characteristic of the system response. So for these examples here, the transfer functions uh, for this example okay, is equal to this one. Let me write it up again. And this is the numerator for this example equal to 1. This is the denominator, which is the denominator, the e -M -O -M -I -N -A -T, denominators um, equations 
of the transfer functions. If we set the denominators equal to zero, this basically is called the characteristic. So that means for this case, the characteristic equation is equal to ms plus c s squared plus k. Um, for those of you taking vibrations, hopefully you have now taken up this. Have you got this step yet? Characteristic equations. Okay. So basically, the same thing. The same here. We mentioned the characteristic equation is the same as you are learning in uh, any positive way. Okay. So from there, you know the characteristic equation determine the system response. Okay, later we will review the system response in terms of characteristic equations here. Um, <clears throat> basically, let me continue. How about that? Let me, let me continue here. So here, the characteristic equations here, we have basically three types. Uh, determine uh, depends on the value of the M, C, and K, we have three types, general three categories of this, the, the system response. One is called the underdam. Vibrations. The second one is the quickly. The third one is called the overdam. Okay, depends on the values. And for this one, basically here, uh, in terms of our uh, definition, is this. We look at the roots here. For this one, the roots has. Category and the underdam system is such that the system, this one, c squared minus 4km, is negative. So from here, we will produce a complex term out of the square root here. Okay. And for quickly damped vibration, that means c squared minus 4km equal to 0. For the overdam, and for the basically here we have is uh, we have the complex uh, conjugate roots. Okay, the roots are the roots of the characteristic equations. For this one, we have the repeated uh, real root. And this one is c squared minus 4km greater than 0. So that means we have this thing. Those are the categories. And in terms of the response, then I can show you Say, let me have the root is here. So say let the root equal to, let me make an uh, example here. Okay, so say we have minus one plus QJ, for example. 
for the mean of these in our vibrations. And let me show you by example here. So that means if we have a rules like this, then that means, uh, which means we have the characteristic equations is something like this, uh, S plus one plus two J as plus one minus two J equal to zero. So that means we have is S square characteristic equations for this case and if you like to expand it basically if you expand it that means uh, that means here the m equal to 1 and c will be equal to 2s2 and k will be equal to 5 here for example okay so for this one I want to know so here is kind of literal definitions but the follow-up is I want to give you these things uh, give you a uh, the example of how the system will be responded. So that's the characteristic equation will be like this, and then our transfer function will be like this. And that means the transfer functions. Let me turn off this one. So therefore, for this transfer function y over ys over f of s will be equal to, for this one, the characteristic equation is the numerator of the transfer function, so that is for s1 squared plus 4, right? So this is 1. So for this case, I want to let you know what that means. So for example, our system is like this in terms of these numerical examples here. So this is our input, and this is our output. And for input here, let me use the symbol f of s, and this is using of y. So again, what is the input output? So this is our system, keep this in mind. So this is our physical system here. We have a mass block. And this is K, this is C, this is M. And here we have the input applied to the mass, F of T. And we measure the degree of freedom, which is the, uh, the displacement, that is Y of T. So that is our system. So we look at these things, what's going on here. So for example, here, for say, um, we may make one example, say, let us our input, for example, here is, say, uh, this is a time. And this is our input ft, say, let me pick up the easiest one, unit step input. What I mean the unit step input, basically is this, you hold the mass block, move down by one unit, hold there, and once we count down to zero, we release it, the system will go to vibrate. So that is what we call the, um, is that right? 